Hey guys, it's Tink here. Today we're going to be talking all about growers versus showers. Which one matters more? How do you know which one you are? Is there a way you can change from a grower to a shower and vice versa? We're going to break that down, including the actual medical literature behind it, so stay tuned. All right, guys. Um, so today we're going to be talking about growers versus showers. Before I go into that, guys, I did a giveaway in one of my last videos, my three year anniversary video there. I reached out to three separate winners, okay, and nobody responded to like my message. So I'm going to be doing a giveaway of whatever supplement you want from Leviathan Supps. All you have to do, watch to the end of the video and I'll give you the rest of the instructions there, but stay tuned, okay? First of all, so how do you know what is a grower versus a shower? Well, there's this paper here that actually tried to break this down in a medical way, and so what they found is that if your penis grows more than 1.5 inches when you go from being in the flaccid state to being erect, you are, in fact, a grower. That's kind of pretty simple, point blank, okay? Well, you know, can you break that down for me, Hink? Well, sure, so you measure in a flaccid state. Now, in this specific, specific instance, it really doesn't matter if it's bone pressed or non bone pressed like and by bone pressed I mean you take a rule and actually press it all the way into your pelvic bone bone or you don't it doesn't matter because the actual penile tissue is going to grow if it grows more than an inch and a half you know there you have it that's your answer I do think that, that this is inherently flawed because if the bigger you get so for example if you had a 10 incher flaccid and you went to like 11.5 you're still gonna look huge either way whereas if you had like a 1.85 inch flaccid and then it went to three inches when you were erect like that's much more of a proportional change so but in general most people are within the average at least one if not two standard deviations so that's neither here nor there 1.5 inches is the definition they use for for these scientific purposes okay so basically all you need to do is measure and measure the difference between flaccid and erect and you go from there, okay? Breaking down this paper, because it is pretty interesting, because there is a paucity, meaning there's not very much data at all in this sphere. And so what they found is it, they looked at a retrospective account of almost 300 patients. Importantly, it was patients that had erectile dysfunction, okay? And what they did was they actually injected a drug into the penis to force an erection. And so they measured the flaccid size and then the erect size and then the difference between them, okay? The median change, meaning like the middle change, so not the mean or the average change, but the middle change um, was about four centimeters or 1.5 inches. And that's where this magic number of 1.5 inches comes from, this flawed study here, but it's still data, okay? Okay, so in this study, 26% of the men were growers and 74% were showers, okay? So this is men with erectile dysfunction, guys. This is not the general population to consider here, but they found that growers were found to be significantly younger and also single. Those are the only correlations that they found. But there was no correlation with race, other comorbidities, or even like actual flaccid penile length, okay? But this is kind of interesting. In this small subset, the growers tended to have a larger erect phallus or erect penis compared to the showers. If you were actually a grower, you tended to have a statistically bigger erect penis, okay? Guys, you can't make general conclusions off of this. Like I said, there's a lot of flaws, but it's still important to analyze the data when we have it, because this can be the foundation for the next study that, hey, maybe you might run, okay? So in general, what are some factors that are associated with being a shower? Well, things like, in general, tissue elasticity, and so that's a big one. We always talk about collagen, but we don't actually talk about elastin concentration in the penis, because yeah, it makes sense. It's only about 5% of the actual penile tissue, but basically the more elastic and the more it can like stretch and constrict again, the more you're gonna be a grower. And that's largely based on genetics. And so say along with that, the collagen distribution in your penis, your baseline blood flow to that region, okay? So for example, if you are a smoker consuming high amounts of nicotine or vaping, and you have that nicotine, you're gonna have that vasoconstriction, there's not gonna be as much blood to your penis, you're much more likely to be a grower, meaning a smaller erect flaccid size. And also age. There's some conflicting data about this, but in general, the younger age people tend to have more elasticity in place and they tend to be more growers, especially based on that study we just did. So does this matter, guys? Well, number one, if we're talking about actual size, most of the time we're talking about erect size, okay? So no, it doesn't matter about the, the, the erect size of your penis, whether you're a grower or you're a shower. There's arguments that could be made for both. If you're a grower, then it's kind of fun to surprise somebody. You're like, oh, you thought I was small, JK, like I'm much bigger than that. And if you're a shower, you know, it's just nice to walk around with a big old flaccid D between your legs all the time. But it really doesn't matter. But where it matters is with confidence. 
So for me, examples, I've always been like a tremendous, tremendous grower. Like me and my, my brother would actually have a joke, and maybe this is like TMI, but we would call ourselves like acorn gang because like, especially when we were exercising or it was cold or just, you know, not in favorable circumstances, like our D's would literally get like so small, it would look like a little acorn in our pants, guys. And I, I actually had a girl in college because I used to like wear basketball shorts all the time that actually said, right before we were hooking up one time, that she knew that I had a small D because she could tell by the way it looked in gym short. And obviously, you know, I'm over it. I don't know why we're still talking about it. I mean, I've completely forgot about that experience and that has nothing to do with why I do PE in the first place. It does matter because like, that's what's most visible and that's what people are gonna see. You know, you go to a urinal, you know, there's a shower scene in a movie or, you know, whatever it may be, most of the time you're not walking around erect. And so I do think that flaccid size does matter in that regard. But importantly, can you go from being a grower to a shower? Can you just, like, how can we get an actual larger flaccid member? That's where PE comes into play. And so there's different pumps. You know, you can pump with air or water. If you need a good air pump, peakmalephysique.com has the cheapest and, you know, high quality pumps, but there's a lot of different others that are available. This is actually like forcing blood into the different chambers of the penis and it keeps it there and it keeps it in a prolonged and expanded state. And over time, this can cause dramatic improvements in your flaccid state. So especially if you can combine with something like tension, okay? There's been studies on extenders that have show, like most importantly, they show that um, you have dramatic improvements in your stretch flaccid length. As a result of this, any kind of tension, whether it be hanging or manual stretches or using an extender. I have a whole video on manual stretches if you're interested on that, but you can actually stretch out that tissue and absolutely, especially when combined with something like pumping, have a much longer flaccid, okay? Along with that, you have to be consistent and you have to be patient using those techniques, but that being said, one of the first things that I noticed when I started PE was that my flaccid size was dramatically bigger, like doubled. I'm not, I'm not even exaggerating here, guys. I would say on average, I was probably around maybe two to three inches max flaccid size. And then once I started PE, even before I had erect gains, I was at like somewhere between five. And now I'm actually like, depending on like the weather, I'm like my flaccid is as much as like uh, God, I don't like talking about it, but a lot, a lot bigger, like three inches bigger, guys. Yeah, you can have dramatic improvement. Cardio, cardio is gonna increase blood flow. The better your blood flow, the more blood is gonna pump to your member and the more it's gonna keep it in a more like relaxed state. However, if you go for a jog or a bike ride and your muscles are using that blood, your body is going to divert it from your penis to your muscles and so in the act, in the acute setting when you're exercising, you might have actually a much smaller flaccid, but in general, it's gonna to lead to better flaccid gains and better health overall, guys, which is all what this is all about. Using supplements, okay? Certain supplements like citrulline, which is a vasodilator, is going to help increase blood flow, honestly, everywhere, but especially to your member. And so, obviously, you guys know we have Vigor, our you know specific formula that I made with many different ingredients, including citrulline and a specific type of arginine, but any of those supplements are going to increase your blood flow that are going to give you a bigger flaccid hang. So along with that, PDE5 inhibitors like Viagra Cialis, you know, Sildenafil, Tadalafil, okay? Those are gonna allow your penis to stay in a more relaxed state. You're going to have a bigger fla flaccid. That's one of the things that people report very often with that. You can also stretch out your suspensory ligament, guys. So many people, in my opinion, don't understand this, but if you go and you have a suspensory ligament surgery. I did an entire video on penis enlargement surgeries, guys. But if you have that surgery where they literally like sever your suspensory ligament, the only benefit is increased flaccid size. The only benefit, guys. That's that's it. There's no erect size gains from that. If you stretch out that ligament, you know, I definitely would never recommend the surgery, but even just something like a manual stretch with a downward force is going to stretch out that ligament, which is going to therefore allow for a bigger flaccid hang by stretching that suspensory ligament, okay? And this is controversial because <laughs> I made a whole video that I ended up having to take down because it was just not very nice. Um, but using a light constriction ring, okay? So what I mean by that is actually like putting a ring around there which is going to trap blood in the penis is going to actually enlarge, lead to an enlarged flaccid size. That is dangerous at most, that should be done for 20 to 30 minutes, even if you're not erect, guys. I don't recommend that, I'm just trying to be complete here. So how can you turn from a shower to a grower, guys? Well, um, things that are gonna shrink your flaccid size include things like cold temperature, um, excessive exercise when you're actively doing it, 
smoking, bad diet, high blood pressure, diabetes, and of course being overweight. All of those things can damage the blood flow and things like, honestly, quite honestly, being overweight, if most of your penis is actually hidden between your fat pad and fat rolls, you're basically not gonna have a penis. And so there's even a condition that's called buried penis. Well, I can't put up a picture here, but you know, it, it's something where basically your penis is not visible because of the fat around it. If you have all that fat pad and then go to, and then have an erection, even if you have a normal size penis, it's gonna appear much smaller, especially in the flaccid size, guys. And so those are all the things that you can do to, to, to basically switch categories. Hopefully nobody wants to switch categories here. And so guys, I hope this was helpful. If you need any enlargement products, peakmalephysique.com. Uh, if you need any of our supplements, like our citrulline-based Vigor supplement, it is an Amazon choice. I, I still can't believe that. I mean, I can, but I can't. Um, but check it out. We have it on Amazon. We also have it on LeviathanSupps.com, along with our testosterone booster and our load booster. Okay. Um, please sign up for my newsletter below, guys. I'm going to be putting out exclusive content that you're only going to find there, as well as uh, some discounts for things like Leviathan, such as Amazon. Ah, the giveaway, guys. So all you have to do is be a subscriber, okay? Preferably a public subscriber. It makes it a lot easier for me, but I, I get that, you know, not only and everybody wants to publicly subscribe to me, it's all good. And leave a comment with, you know, hopefully you say something nice like, hey, great video, but all you have to tell me is what type of Leviathan wellness product you want. And I will be reaching out in the comment section. You will see a, a reply by me. And um, that's how, and then we can work out the arrangements. I'll, I'll tell you how to contact me, okay? But that's how you can win your own product. If you need to reach me, Patreon, Doc, Hink. Uh, until the next one, guys, hopefully this was helpful. Peace and love.